got our very first yum box. Yum yum. I'm excited y'all. From Universal Yums. We got the yum box. It's supposed to have six snacks in it. It's $13.75 per box. That's not bad y'all. It comes with a 12 page booklet with Ooh. trivia and games. And it's free shipping US only. These yums traveled all the way from the land of milk and honey. And Ooh. do you know where the land of milk and honey is? That's Israel, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm excited, y'all. This is going to be so We're going to open fun. this up, y'all. This is so neat. It says, Welcome to Israel. Oh, this is so fun. The game's on the back. And then it talks about little places. Oh. Like Nazareth, hometown of Jesus. Universal Yums welcomes you to Israel. Now, this is, this neat. is so neat. You know, Annette, she's very picky, so this is going to be real fun for me Here's watch. this stuff. A little note here about allergies. So, like, for milk, eggs, fish, sell, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans, sesame seeds, mustard, sulfur dioxide, and sulfites. So, if you have any allergies to those things, you might need to stay away. So, it does yeah. have that little warning there. And then it shows um, pictures, I guess, of everything that's in here. So we'll go by that. Yeah. Uh, that's the first thing right there. Okay, and ready? Right here, and I'm going to tell you, I might not be pronouncing these things right. I probably I'm won't. Cremla Nugget Bites. It's peanut butter coated cereal bites with hazelnut cream. I love hazelnut. You may not believe it, but you're holding in your hands a modern scientific discovery. This snack has saved lives. Ooh. Oh. For years, scientists noticed an interesting trend in Israel. There was a shockingly low number of children with peanut allergies, far lower than any other modern nation. In 2008, scientists discovered the cause, peanut puffs, over 90% of Israelite families buy them as a snack for their households because they're more popular than potato chips. Children eat the puffs as one of their first foods, developing a tolerance for peanuts as they grow up. Early exposure to peanuts has now been proven to reduce the risk of developing a peanut allergy by 81%. Now we can't make any claims about this particular puffs and those with peanut allergies should def definitely not eat this snack, but we will share a theory. They won't last more than a day in any household, Israelite or not, with a sweet hazelnut nugget feeling. These gems aren't just a breakthrough in science. They're a discovery and a taste. Here we go, y'all. Here's what they look like. They, some of them are broken. So we're just going to break it in two. They smell pretty good. Let's get your reaction first. The outside tastes like cheese puffs. It does. And you can just They're barely good. taste the little hazelnut. They're very good, y'all. Falafel Sasha falafel flavored puffs. Throughout history, Israel has been mired in conflict. That conflict has spread to all aspects of the country. It even applies to food. While many Israelites see falafel as a national dish, others think Israel can't take credit for the flav flavorful vegetarian cre creation. It's a fried fritters made from chickpeas or favorite beans mixed with her herbs, spices, and onions. It is a dis disputably ancient, Indisputably. Yeah, ancient dish. Israelites believe the Jewish have eaten it for centuries because it's kosher. Egyptians claim it was first made by Christians in their country who ate it during Lent. Even India has gotten in on the controversy with many arguing that falafel originated there as the country has historically specialized in fried foods regardless of where it came from falafel is a stable in israel and it's there to stay it's the country's most popular street food option as well as a common flavor in its snack while we can't say if you're eating israelite or egyptian or indian falafel we can tell you that the unmistakably strong flavor is loved by many people, including, hopefully soon, you. It's another type of food. <coughs> I hope you have a large reaction. Oh, you know what they look like? They look like Kik cereal. Kik. Oh, okay. They sure do. Look how little they are. They're tiny. They don't have a smell. You don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. it. It's um, 
I'm not crazy over that. It's kind of has a taste, a little <laughs> teeny bit like a funion. A little bit of taste. Just not I much. like funions. I do too. Onion, bizzle. Onion flavored wheat, wheat stack. It's reminding me by looking like Funyuns we were just talking about. Open this pack and look carefully at we, what you see. Open the pack and look oh, carefully at what you see. Excuse me. <laughs> do, you, do the chews look like anything familiar? Sure, Possibly something you eat with a sauce. Say perhaps pasta? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. That. Surprisingly, this pungent onion Y snack is created. Oniony. Oniony. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Snack is created by a company that used to make pasta. In 1942, three small pasta makers met with the hopes of building a truly Israelite food company. Even before Israel insisted <laughs> as a nation, which happened in 1948. They called this company, help me with the word. Oh. I don't know. Awesome. I don't know how to awesome. pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it. Borrowed from an ancient Hebrew, Hebrew prayer that reads, May this year be a year of plenty. They were plenty successful with their pasta products, quickly becoming a household name. As the company grew, they set their sights on something else, snacks. That's when this crunchy noodle resembling snack comes in. That's where it comes in. In 1970, Usum, <laughs> or Awesome, came up with a line of savory snacks inspired by their flip side, their flag side Woo! Woo! She can't read this moment. Inspired by the, their flagship. flagship product. All of the varieties of Bizzilli are made Bizzilli. to look like different types of pasta. Harkening back to the company's humble beginning. What's an awesome, awesome story? What an awesome Maybe story. it's called awesome then. Awesome story. Say awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds like something I've had before. I can't get it. It smells like honey barbecue potato chips. Smell it. Yeah, kind of. But it's a texture like a corn chip. Yes, like Fritos. Fritos corn chip. Okay, go ahead. She always makes me go for it. <laughs> Crunchy. I like them. <laughs> I can eat it. Well, you keep them with your flavors over there. First, like, the first bite, the first taste was pretty good, but then... Keep crunching on it. It's hard. I need something to drink. Well, we'll have to wait. Okay, here's I'm going to read one. Okay, we read that with no glasses. Oh, God, it's got coconut. All right. It would be this, what she's fixing to read, y'all. It's popping chocolate. Milk chocolate with popping candies. Oh. Okay. It's not what we're eating here. Yes, it is. Chocolate with pop no. rocks. No. That's that chocolate. She'll learn to listen to me one day, y'all. One day. Okay. One day. Sorry. She'll learn to listen to me. Okay. Does that look like chalk? <laughs> I didn't throw it on the inside. I'm right. on the inside. Well, I'll just let you do your job. Right. Give, <laughs> Give me that back. Give me that back. All right. This is a, a maroon, a maroon coconut rolls. I'm not big on coconut. I don't like coconut. I like the little tiny shredded coconut like in an Almond Joy but not the stringy. This looks like this might be chopped up. But I like that. Coconut bar rolled in coconut flakes. So it's a lot of coconut. <laughs> You've heard of Jesus of Nazareth. Well now, meet the coconut rolls of Nazareth. These traditions... <laughs> you ever you hear that? <laughs> Watch that in the mail. All right. Now, macaron coconut. Here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> it's called macaron. What is it? Macaroon? I don't know, y'all. Well, we're going to say my rum. Coconut <laughs> rum. <laughs> I'm not sure. Y'all know we don't know how to talk correctly. No. Traditional Israel, Israelite. Rolls are made in the same city that Jesus is believed to have lived. While the city has changed quite a bit since Jesus' time, there's now a yearly classic car event held in town. It, it's remained an important place for both Christians and Muslims. Over 2.3 million Christians visit the city every year to see Mary's wedding, where Jesus was bathed as a child, as well as the St. Gabriel Church of the Anonication where Mary learned that she would give birth to Jesus. 
When visitors need a rest from touring these famous sites, many flock to the Maroon Bakery and Confectionery. While it's a much, much lesser known des destination than others in Nazareth, these lively bakery, this lively bakery have been, has been operating since 1977, specializing in authentic, authentic Arabic treats. After one bite of this brightly colored sweet, you can basically say you've been a tourist in Nazareth. Oh That's my gosh, exciting. I'm fixing to go to Nazareth. Y'all know I won't be going in real life. I, I'm excited over this box shop too. because really neat. we won't never, we will probably never go to these I places. Know I and it is so neat. I mean, I love this so good, don't you? Mm -hmm. It looks really good to me now. I might have to eat the half the thing. Whole hat. Oh my lord, it's got a lot. That's the kind of coconut I can eat. Just stain your teeth all day. It's good. It is good if you like coconut. Okay. You know them things we have that's brown, tan looking? And snowballs. Well, yeah, that's what they remind me of. Little snowballs we have here. Okay, while Tina's chewing, I'm going to go ahead and read this one. Everything Chick Chat. That's cute. Chick Chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. The word everything might be in the name of this snack, but it's a little bit decept deceptive. Many Israelite Jews can't eat everything, and that's because they keep kosher. You might have heard the phrase before, you can, before, but you may not know what it means. Some people think it's food that has been blessed by a rabbi. Other believes it's type of cuisine. cuisine. Neither is true. Keeping kosher means following a set of commandments about food that were written in the Torah, the most holy religious text in Judaism. I probably did not say that right, so I apologize. While these rules are open to various interpretations, there are a few generally accepted standards. For example, pork is banned, as are certain shellfish. Dairy can't be consumed with meat, and the utensils used to cook, one can't be used to cook the other. Fruits and veggies are fine, but they must be inspected for bugs, which are, aren't kosher. No meat, dairy, or bugs, thankfully, in this crunchy wheat bites, but they do have everything else you could want in a snack, including salt, turmeric, paprika, and a handful of fresh spices. You can now see that these spirals of goodness are actually named quite appropriately. This is like something we have. We have something that's got those spirals like this. Look at that. But they're longer. Yeah, what are they called? And that barbecue. And yeah, they are. Know. Then you know I can eat about anything, y'all. But now I don't really like that. I don't really care for that, y'all. I love this. Many pistachio have. Hey, let me say we got eight things instead of six. I'm excited. Sesame candy with pistachios. I like pistachios. I like pistachios. Mmm. Mmm. A sweet that's a thousand years old. Sounds appetizing, right? Well, the good news is that the have in your hand is as fresh as can be. It's just the recipe that's old. Very old, in fact. It goes all the way back to the 1100s. That's not surprising since the main ingredient, sesame, is one of the oldest seeds known to man. First cultivating in India, the crop quickly spread to the Middle East through trade. Over time, sesame seeds became a staple of Israelite, Israelite cuisine, featured in dis dishes such as hummus, baba, ganache. For the unfamiliar, hava is a dense, crumbly dessert made with sesame seed paste called tayana, mixed with hot, sugary syrup. The con concoction is then cooled and often mixed with almonds and pistachios. In this case, your yum contains pistachios. Now that we've filled you in on the ancient recipe, it's time to fill up on this unique treat. Open sesame! <laughs> it's, very it, it's, it's very strong. It's very strong. But it's like this, y'all. I'm kind of nervous about it. I, you know, I taste it, eat everything. I say it all the time. But I'm a little nervous about this. I'm letting Nick go first, believe it or not. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Well, I don't I even want to after you did that. I will, because it's only fair if we taste it both. I'm going to try it. I don't like fast nose. <laughs> It 
it's really, it's, well, I'm gonna tell you what, the taste is not bad, but I don't like the texture. I think the texture is what gets me. <laughs> I don't want that, don't make me eat it. I ain't really not crazy over that, either. But we're trying new things. That's the whole deal, Bess. I don't like pistachios. I can eat the pistachios. pistachios. <laughs> I just don't. The texture the of that is just. The texture is a little just, strange. Let's spit all over. all over me. He gave us two of these. Pomegranate Turkish, Turkish delight. delight. Pomegranate candy with almonds. Hmm. Okay. Eating this tasty treat is nice. But do you know what would be even better? If eating this tasty treat made you and everyone who ate it a nicer person. Oh. Mm. Well, maybe it will. In Judaism, Judaism, pomegranates have long been considered a symbol of moral and spiritual righteousness. They are often eaten during religious holiday. Pomegranates have 613 seeds, Ooh. which corresponds exactly with the 613 midst of what? or commandments of the Torah. May we be as full of mistress of what? as the pomegranate is full of seeds. Before digging into the bright red super fruit, while nothing magical happens when it's eaten, symbolism of consuming the fruit makes people reevaluate their choices and decisions. We recommend keeping your favorite yums to yourself. But in the case of this pomegranate flavored almond filled treat, maybe you should consider sharing. It would only be fitting. <laughs> I always see a big almond or something in there. Almond. Yeah. Okay. It's really pretty. It is. It would be a really pretty colorful Christmas treat, this layout, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? It's like a jelly texture on the inside. <laughs> she don't like it. <laughs> I kind of like it. I like it all right. All right, this is our last one. She's like chewing up. Are you going to mind? I'm about choked there, Funk. I'm looking forward to this. I sure hope it's good. Oh, it's got a cow on it. Mm -hmm. This one is called Strayus Poppin' Chocolate. I wouldn't say that right. Milk chocolate with popping candy. Oh boy. Chocolate with pop rocks. Oh. oh, it says. You've likely never tried a chocolate bar quite like this before, unless you were with us the last time we went to Israel with the candy that was voted the number one item in the box. So how did this uber unique chocolate come about? The story starts with a cow. Oh, or two cows, actually. In 1936, Richard and Hilda Strauss started a dairy farm in Israel with two cows. Somehow, these fruitful cows had extra milk, so the couple began making cheese. Two years later, they started making chocolate as well. Eventually, their son, Michael, went from helping deliver milk in a donkey don in a donkey drone cart to leading the largest food manufacturer in Israel. Hmm. Yes, that's how far the two cows got them. So, while chocolate and pot rice might seem like a random combination, it's actually... It actually makes a lot of sense. The high-quality milk chocolate has been produced by Shreyas for decades, and the popping candies are a fantastically fun reminder of the explosive success they've had. A snacking experience unlike any other, this chocolate is incredibly popular in Israel, in, in Israel and you'll soon taste why. I'm excited, why excited about, excited about, about this, this. Because we have them little packages of pop yeah. rocks, and I love to put them in my mouth, but they just pop yeah. everywhere. And, so, and I love chocolate, so Look I'm excited over this, y'all. This is fun. I will tell you, I have loved this box. This has been I have fun. absolutely loved it. I love the way it tells you about each item and about the country. Look at the little cows. Oh, it smells good. Right. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Did you all hear that? I bit that and it just cracked and popped. That is delicious. Y'all, this is my favorite. This is my favorite out of this box, y'all. I love it. It's popping in the it back of my jaw. It's popping back there. It's so good, y'all. Y'all, that's delicious. Mm -hmm. You can go to universalyums.com and sign up and get you a box. So much fun. It's it really interesting, is. too. I mean, I know a lot of that stuff I really didn't care for, but it's fun just trying different things. And mm -hmm. I can say I've tasted stuff from Israel. Thank y'all so much for stopping by and checking out our very first yum box from Universal Yums. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all.